Hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I just wanted to quickly apologize for the previous video, which had a few minutes at the end of the audio missing on the wonderful presentation on Antitia. So thank you all for letting us know in the comments. I don't know if I can strike that up to Mercury Detriment Square Neptune Station in Direct. But again, thank you for letting us know. And without further ado, we'll finish the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Another quick example, Lady Gaga. You might want to have guessed that there would be a lot of Pisces Aries. This is also an example of double D data. So conflicting time, but really shows how, you know, these placements stand for the day. Um, we don't have to focus on the angles, midheaven ascendant, and the moon would be a little unknown. But the fact that the Mars, that Mars was, um, on the Capricorn ingress point, very important. I love that it scoops closely at the midpoint of Mars in her chart because Uranus so innovative and unique and Neptune with music and dance and art and also this as a combination being rather um, otherworldly and through all of you know her life force and energy, the work, of changing things to the work of um, just almost limitless potential with limitless, I think very much of this Pisces, Aries, these reflections, you can see the sun Mercury is not super far off, but not within the orbs that I like to work with, but you can see Venus, Jupiter are quite connected. Um, we saw that remember with Hendrix and I think of that as, you know, being loved and cherished, having a ton of love to give with also the just plentiful and costumes and just all of the art, <laughs> art pop, like all of this conveyance of beauty of all kinds. Um, anyway, it's a great, fun example as far as those symbols. And I think um, unless we wanted to go way over and go into timing, I will conclude with Fred Rogers, uh, Mr. Rogers, who had the ascendant in Taurus and Mars in Aquarius. And if we were to look at that chart in the regular form, you would also see that the Mars placement is in the 10th probably by any quadrant system as well. And so tying back to the ascendant, being so very devoted to his work, his work really being about activism, truly, um, both for children and for their mental health and mental wellness, but for people of all ages and that people should be loved and cared for and protected and you know, that we should take time again with those more, um, the, the elements that I was linking to the Taurus Aquarius connection specifically kind of utopian, but like take time for silence, have a pause, care for people in your community, Aquarius. This is with him, of course, and Officer Clemens and that really important episode, which was a statement against racism in this country. And um, that this specific episode was broadcast very shortly after he spoke to Congress, um, which has phenomenal timing, this like early part of May in 67, right? My, I know I've got the slide next, um, where Uranus also in his chart comes to the cardinal axis by transit as he's a son Uranus. There's just tons of timing in it. It's really wonderful to look at, but just the things that he stood for and his work in the world and um, long career. And yeah, he is a treasure. Oh, actually skipping over this. This just shows another sinistry, but I do think that I will conclude here. Such, such a mind-blowing presentation. I could go on for another, I'm sure the rest of us can go for hours too. <laughs> like a Jimi <laughs> Hendrix so solo, we didn't want to stop you mid-flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> so thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I hope that you can see how, oh, like limitless you can <laughs> apply it and the timing that comes alive with it is really amazing.